Hello and welcome back to my channel where I talk about Japan the JET program, give my advice and opinions, share my experiences and travels, so if any of that interests you, be sure to subscribe. So I believe that the American 2021 JET application deadline is the 20th of this month, which is a lot earlier than I expected. And if that's the case, then this is the last piece of advice that I'll be giving you this year. But for everyone who has a later deadline, I believe at least the UK and Australia, it's sometime in December, then next week's video will also have an application focus. So again, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. This week, I have gone on to Reddit it to find questions from 2021 applicants. There's a big mega thread where people have been posting their very specific questions. Everyone's going through the same process and everyone has these questions. There is no stupid question. Well, that's a lie, there is. But it's never stupid to ask a question you have. I've picked out about 10 questions that I'm gonna answer here for you guys. Hi all, Aspiring Jet from UK here. Under the Employment History tab, I did an unpaid internship for nine months with the NHS, so a well-known organization. Would I be able to put this experience under there as there is no part for volunteering? Thank you. A lot of us who apply don't have, for example, much teaching experience or any teaching experience, and we have to really kind of spin the little vague bits of experience we have to make it seem like a much bigger deal. This is just another example of that. You know, you've got to spin what you have make it work for you. Don't say like anywhere in the application, oh, I did this unpaid internship thing and it was kind of like a job, so I'm just gonna put here, blah, blah, blah. No, this is my old job. Put it that way, make it defined, like say what it is, spin it how you want it to be perceived. And you know, if you're not supposed to do that, I really don't think they're gonna care if you put unpaid work in the work section, in my opinion. I'm technically bilingual, but learned English second. Would it affect my application if I put a different native language and listed it my English level as excellent? Obviously, I don't work for JET, so I can only give my opinion here. But in my opinion, if your English is at a native level, then that will be very apparent in your application, in your statement of purpose, and the way you use English. So no, I don't think it will matter if you say English is like a second language to you. If you want to just say that English is your first language because it'll make you feel more comfortable with your application, go for it. They're not going to call you out on something like that, I don't think, unless you rock up and you can't speak English. <laughs> US applicant, I'm a bit worried about how my academic transcript looks in relation to the rest of my application. Does anyone know if there are certain GPA minimums, etc.? Also, since my transcript shows a vast improvement in the later semesters, do you think I should use space in my statement of purpose to discuss so there is some context? The only requirement the JET program has is that you have a degree. I really think specific grades and stuff, they don't care that much. That is really not that important. And so to answer the second part of that question, I really really don't think that's worth addressing in your statement of purpose because that's not what the statement of purpose is about. The purpose for you applying for JET is not because you did better in the later part of your degree. I heard somewhere that if you put all your preference choices as main cities, i.e. Tokyo, Osaka, Kyoto, you're more likely to get rejected as they want people to go to more rural areas. Is that true? Would even more remote boost my chances or does it not matter at all and they'll send you wherever they want. Ultimately they will send you wherever they want. The preferences is by no means any guarantee. I think you are less likely to get your requested placement if you put all big cities, but I don't think it's because they want more ALTs in rural areas. The number of placements available in rural and urban areas are set. The majority of people want to be in Tokyo, Osaka, all these big exciting places. They can only accept so many and if everyone's applying for those then I don't know how they choose but you're less likely. What I did and what worked for me was that I chose smaller areas around big cities. So I knew I wanted to be near Osaka, so I picked places in Hyogo Prefecture and in and around Osaka, smaller cities, and that's exactly what I got. And now I live half an hour away from Osaka. It's a great time. Canadian applicant here. I began writing my statement of purpose essay before the official fill-out forms were available. While completing them, I noticed that most of my essay is just about things that I already have to mention in the forms. Is it fine that it repeats some things? Basically. 
if you are going to repeat stuff from your application, you should only be repeating the bare minimum to give context to allow you to elaborate and add to that. If you're just throwing it in there so something you've done is mentioned, that's pointless, that's a waste of words. Your main core teaching experience or your main traveling abroad experience, of course you're gonna have to talk about that in your statement of purpose. I think the main thing which bugs me when I read people's statement of purposes is little details. So like if they say, oh my degree in blah 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 where I got a 2-1 in 2000 and whatever, the bare minimum you need to mention to then elaborate is, oh I have a degree in blah blah blah. Okay I hope that makes sense. <laughs> aspiring jet from UK. I'm not a teacher so I don't have teaching experience in that sense however I'm a firefighter and in charge of my station's school program so I'm the one that goes to schools and delivers fire safety lessons to children aged year one and year five. I have also given road safety and bike safety lessons to teenagers and adults. Could this be classed as teaching? Honestly you probably have more teaching experience than the majority of applicants. <laughs> Again use what you have, work with it and present it in the way you want it to be perceived. I have teaching experience. You literally taught kids about stuff. How important would people say conclusion paragraphs are for statement of purpose? I have conflicting accounts of this. I personally think conclusions are important. The introduction and the conclusion of your statement of purpose are the best places to really showcase your passion, showing your unique selling point. For me, because I've been talking a lot about videos, I brought it back to that. My passion for storytelling and how I can't can't wait to tell my story in Japan to the rest of the world and something which linked my passion, everything I'd been talking about and the goals of the JET program and what I wanted and all kind of collated in this nice little conclusion and I think it just it leaves a strong impression. Australian applicant, I'm thinking about getting two letters of recommendations from two professional sources since I have recently graduated and don't really have any strong connections with any lecturers or tutors. I know that the two references will write strong letters of recommendations recommendations for me but there are still no academic references. Should I still go ahead with two professional references? This question is easily answered by taking a brief look at the JET Australia website. I literally in two minutes quickly googled it and it said two letters of reference from professional sources in either English or Japanese. If you have not graduated by the time of application one of the referees must be someone related to your university. So yeah that's fine because this person has already graduated. So in this case you shouldn't give an academic reference. You should only be giving the two professional references. I don't know how it varies from country to country but if you have a very very specific question like this check the website, check the FAQs, check all of that stuff because there's probably an answer there for at least in terms of requirements of what you need to give. Are you writing your personal statement as an essay or answering the questions one by one with headers? I hear most people write an essay. Do you need to write an equal amount of words roughly for each question? I have the most to say for question one and have written in essay style for now but I'm worried that it doesn't answer the questions as clearly and explicitly. As I mentioned already, it is a formal essay style. I definitely wouldn't write each question and then the answer question answer. That's not what you're being asked to do. Please write it like an essay style. As for the amount of words you put towards each question, I don't think it matters if you focus on one question more than another and dedicate more words to one than another. However, I would make sure that you do answer all the questions enough so that at least you can show that you cover all the bases. Because if they have a big pile of good strong applications which do cover all the bases and then a pile of applications which cover some bases they're not going to use those. You don't need to do it evenly, but do cover all the questions enough. Don't just write one or two sentences about one of the questions and move on, you know? UK here. I'm kind of in a desperate situation. Accidentally uploaded my passport scan as a PNG file instead of PDF. What do I do? Is my whole application going to be rejected because of this? So this is a perfect example of why you really need to quadruple double check everything like a million times. But you know, we're all human, we make mistakes, stuff like this happens. Do I think that they're gonna throw out your whole application? No, I don't think they would. But all you can do is email them a copy of the PDF, just say, hey, sorry, I've just realized that I accidentally sent a PNG instead of PDF. Here's the PDF, hope it won't affect my application, thanks, bye. I mean, you can say it more formally and politely than that, but 
that's all you can do. You can resubmit the application, so try not to think about it. If you have any tiny or stupid questions of your own, just comment them below. If you don't, they're just gonna weigh on you until you get an answer, so just ask. That is the moral of this story. And that brings me to the end of this video. I hope you found some of this content relatable and helpful. Good luck with your applications, American ALTs. As for everyone else, as I said, there's more application-related content coming. So, do subscribe. If you found this video useful or helpful in any way, do give it a like to show your appreciation. Okay, thank you very much guys. I will see you next time.